All right, so just as a presentation, I'm Eduardo Rubio. I've been an animator on games for about six years now. Uh, working on this Coliseum at Zaum Studio. And during the end of development of the game, uh, I had to switch for uh, technical reasons. I ended up needing to switch to Blender. And uh, it has to do a lot with uh, Bring on the Fly and how it Bring on the Fly came to be. Uh, with Santiago that is joining us, uh, we both have been able, uh, have been making the add-on together, and yeah, uh, let's start. So it all started with this presentation from Richard Lico. Uh, in there, he talks about how he, as a as the sole animator of Polyarc on Moss, uh, on Moss One. Uh, he mentioned that he had to find a way to make all this uh, all this work on his own, but also for it to be like at the same time faster, but uh, also more flexible. Uh, he mentioned uh, on this talk that he's not a rigger, but he has uh, he has experience with uh, modifying his rigs. To fit what he needs. Uh, if you click on the link, you'll be able to get to the uh, right to the point of the talk where he talks about this uh, getting to this animation playground, pretty much, where you can do anything. You don't have much restrictions. But um, let's go back. Uh, after this talk, after seeing this talk, uh, I've talked to Santiago, we said that it was really interesting. Uh, what inspired me the most was when Richard Lico mentioned he could do about three seconds of animation of quality animation in one day, but with his new approach, he was able to do five times the same amount. And this kind of blew my mind, inspired me a lot, and we started looking into ways to have something similar since at the time I was working as the sole animator on this Coliseum and wanted to do my own animation uh, game animations on the side and so yeah th this was really what triggered it all uh, so we already started making stuff with the uh, rig on the fly it was really just um, the seed of it and not long later we have uh, animation Sherpa, which is Richard Dico's uh, training uh, course. And he has currently one course, which is space switching for animators. It's I highly recommend it. And a lot of what you can find in Ring of the Fly is heavily inspired by uh, what's in this course. But if you have the chance, if you have the money, please get this course and check his videos. It goes very much in depth on how to think about it uh, and how, how to use those tools available to you. But Rick on Fly doesn't do everything that's in this course. It only takes parts of it. Uh, the, it's an array of the simpler tool, of the simpler but more generalized scripts. And it's just a part of what was shown in animation Sherpa's space switching course. Uh, then let's see how it goes for the... For Ring Fly then, we chose to go about it following these kind of three pillars of being clean, clear, and keep yourself in the flow. Uh, so on the clean part, the the idea was to be able to just remove anything that was done with rag on the fly at any time without leaving a trace, uh, which you can simply do now with the baking rig. You can find it in two places, 
You click this and it removes any trace of the, of the add-on on your ray. It's also, uh, it doesn't make any changes to the underlying structure of your rig. So for, yeah, it, for games especially, you want to avoid keeping those controllers in your export. And uh, yeah, and so if you bake everything, you should be able to remove or ignore all those controllers that are just there to move your, your rig correctly but aren't part of the structure that you want for deforming your mesh. It's also, uh, we also try to avoid visual clutter. So when we change the behavior of the ring, it removes all the controllers that are driven by this new, new behavior. So for example, on the left, when distributing the, the rotations, uh, of the tail, we don't need those controllers anymore. And this makes it easier to, to understand what's happening as well. Uh, we try to keep the UI as clean as possible. It's a bit difficult because there's a lot of different settings and a lot of different functions that you are going to use and should be available. But we put them into tabs so that at least you can uh, hide them off if you need. And we try to organize them so that everything that has to do with aim, for example, is under its own block. And we try to use short names when possible so that it's readable when the uh, this window is pretty sh short on the horizontal axis. Now, on the clear side, we try to... So the what happens with uh, Ray on the fly... Or... Let's start again. On Richard Lico's presentation, he talked about um, those... Ah, I forgot the name. Uh, custom properties and how what drives the motion of your character can be hidden in those, uh, in those properties. And one of the points with the ring on the fly is to keep all the, the motion into those three transforms, which are location, rotation, and scale. So that's, it's really understandable and clear what is driving the motion. Uh, we also try to keep the names clear and the controller shapes uh, to change so that it fits, so that it shows that your, your rig changed behavior. So you always have those uh, crosshairs for things that are closer to locators, how you usually use them. You only care about the location of it, but you, you don't need to take care of the rotation or the scale. Uh, here we have a circle with oops, circle with a line shows that it's an aim control, and it's being driven to by uh, an aim target. We have squares, which are more about uh, the fact that they are not on like the let's see the translation is more important to it than what you would find in, in an FK chain, for example, the arms. So the, the squares has, uh, you would expect it to move more. It would be usually in world space or it shouldn't have, uh, it rarely has any parent over it. And then we have the hexagon, which right now is mostly used for uh, when there's a parent relationship. And yeah, we'll, we'll be able to go over it during the live demo. But this makes it so that it's easier to come to an, an old animation or to share an animation with, some, with someone else and they can understand what's happening. And you don't lose time going to those custom properties to understand how the rig works because it's 
all pretty clear. And now in the, the flow section, we have uh, one of the main goals of Bear on the Fly, which is to change the behavior of your animation as you're animating. And so suddenly something that was just an IK foot has some what resembles a foot roll. But the animation itself didn't change and you will be able to make edits after this but with this new behavior. Uh, also, when we change the, the behavior of the rig, what happens is you, you want to be able to move them around quickly. So usually we leave, once you click a button, for example, the IK, it's all the controllers, the new controllers are already selected. And you don't have to reselect them to move them around. And that's pretty important so that we can keep this flow state of animation. We also try to make it so that it works with different workflows. So here, for example, we have a linked armature, which is basically what proxies are. And right now, with this system, usually you can't make changes to a rig uh, that has been linked. So what rig on the fly does is a copy of this rig. And this copy is editable. It's not linked in any way, but it drives the linked armature. We'll be able to go more in depth uh, into it uh, during the live demo, but that's one of the approach. Uh, approaches so that we can kind of cater to different workflows. Uh, next is uh, yeah a solution for for rigs that come from uh, elsewhere than Blender, and this is because a lot of the time when you're using Blender, uh, you end up sending or getting animations or rigs from other softwares. And so keeping like keeping a way to keep uh, to let's see uh, having a, a solution so that you can make those edits to your animation without messing up the structure of the rig is very important. So right there the, the main solution for this is the Orient Visible. So right now, before I press the Orient Visible, the rig was done in Maya. So the, the animation was done in Maya, it came from Maya. And since I, I stopped using Maya at some point, uh, I needed to make edits to older animations. Uh, with this, I could still make those, those edits and I didn't change the structure at all. And finally, uh, rig on the fly is mostly a time saver. It makes you able to change how your rig uh, functions, how it behaves, and you're able to make those changes quickly. And that's why we have the, the rig state, which kind of saves the changes that were done by rig on the fly. And you can keep them, organize it how you want and load them up whenever you need them. And just to finish off, uh, just like Blender, it's open source. We're under an MIT license and you are welcome to help in any way you want, you're able. Uh, we are, yeah, we would be glad to have more help on it. That's it. Thank you very much.